happy Thursday, everybody. Hard to believe another day has come. So let us begin our morning prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. And I declare that forgiveness to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now rest in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. You, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us, O Lord, our God. Jeremiah 14. For our saint and sinner devotional, we are on day 35. Hard to believe, but we are. And this one is, God, I'm not, I'm sorry, I wanted to change it. God, I'm mad at you by Bruce Hillman. With my voice, I cry to the Lord. With my voice, I plead mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. Psalm 142, 1 through 3. How many times have you been mad at God? Perhaps more than you'd like to admit. I remember a time when a family member said some very hurtful things to me, and I was very upset. I felt the comments were extremely unfair and disingenuous. My mother gave me good counsel, Bruce. She said, people hurt people hurt people. And it's sadly true. Sometimes in our close relationships, we have to be the dumpster th people throw their trash at. Sometimes those closest to us will say the meanest things and treat us poorly because we are their safe people. Because love creates trust. Loved ones become opportunities to hurt people, to express themselves honestly because they know we won't leave or abandon them. So often we have to take the brunt of our lover's frustration Wisdom is needed here because relationships that do this with a manipulative goal are abusive. But often, because hurt people know you love them, they will say and do mean things to you. Just ask any parent. When we are hurt, we cry out to God. But sometimes when the hurt gets really intense, our laments turn to complaint. Not only is this normal, but almost every lament in scripture contains a complaint. Now it seems reasonable to me that if God included all these laments in his holy word, that ha was because he wanted us to pray them when we find ourselves in similar places. And if that is true, then essentially God is inviting us to be honest with him in prayer. In this psalm, we see that af affirmation. The psalmist pours out his complaint to God, telling the Lord his troubles and struggles, he is not afraid to be honest with God about what he is feeling. In fact, his spirit is so exhausted that he finds his only hope in the knowledge that God will set things right. Sometimes we need to pray honest prayers. We must always pray with respect and reverence, but that doesn't mean we can't be honest. Lord, you have deeply wounded me. I am upset with you. 
Why don't you help me? There is more truth and relational trust in that prayer than to, in the many prayers that ask God to bless and give me this. Those honest prayers show that you trust God and love him, that he is your safe person to whom you can continually come. God himself demonstrated this love on the cross. When Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world, he also took upon himself the wrath of God against our sin. As he bears that wrath, he is forsaken both by God and humanity. He is the rejected one. Humanity has issued its complaint and finds him guilty. They nail him to a cross and reject him. God also rejects him on the cross, pouring judgment out upon him in the form of divine guilty verdict. The cross is the complaint of God against humanity, meeting the complaint of man against God, the man of sorrows rejected by all. We hear his graphic loneliness. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. This cry, by the way, is not Jesus' own, but was first in psalmists, the psalmists in Psalm 22. Jesus' words on the cross parrot human complaints. He speaks our words, takes our place, cries our desperation. Because Jesus has taken our cause and our place, we can pray honestly. He himself complained, and he himself can endure it. The real challenge is not to let our complaints turn into ingratitude, in which case they can function to alienate, alienate us from God's love by puffing us up with entitlement. But on the whole, pray honestly. God will never abandon or forsake you. He is with you always, even when you are mad at him. Let us live in this promise. I actually frequently say that God can actually take our anger much more than the people around us. Because there is that tendency for the people you're, you're closest to. Look at any child and they're having a hard day and they come out and the, within, with the parent they feel that most secure with, they lash out and they misbehave. And at school or at wherever they are, um, have it all contained and then they just, it, the floodgates break loose. So there's, of course, teaching to do that in there as, as a parent, um, sometimes better done than others. But um, that sense of the floodgates opening when you feel you can relax and let down. And sometimes your words hurt. And while it's good to have that person or people with whom you can be completely vulnerable and honest, because we're in the middle of working through our emotion and where we're at, it's not refined and it does come with daggers sometimes. And um, that were daggers that harm the people around us. And there is that line of abuse. So this is not by any means condoning abuse, but stating the reality of how we um, share our, our pain and our hurt and we tend to hurt others and needing to kind of come back and have that strength. But with God, God understands all of that. And God isn't, other than Jesus literally died because of this very fact of uh, we can't do it on our own and we get hurt and we lash out in our frustration and our sin and our anger. Um, and Christ literally died. He was between our anger and the abandonment of the father um, because he became sin for us. He took all of the hurt of the world upon himself and all of our hurting of hurt people when we are hurt. I mean, it just kind of, you can add your hurts on there. Um, and he did something about it. And he's not gonna break again because he already did. <laughs> and so when you're angry, when you're frustrated, Consider first going to God, getting the words figured out, railing at God of just all that's happening, of where is God in this? Why are these things happening to you? Why do you feel abandoned by God, by the world, by those that matter? God's not going to break. God already did. The people around you might break because they are flesh and blood and bone and emotion. 
and fragile. So with all confidence, it's not unfaithful. I love that fact. That's why I love the Psalms. It's not unfaithful to be completely authentic in where you're at with God. And that going to God, reaching out to God, also allows God's word to come in and say, I know and I love you. I know and this is my word of grace and forgiveness and truth for you. I know and here's a new day. I know and there's repercussions in the world, but you are my child. So with, a vo with my voice, I cry to the Lord. With my voice, I plead mercy to the, to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know the way. The entitlement part hits on the fact that God is also not a genie. <laughs> it's not like you're going to pray three times and you get three wishes to God. Um, you know, world peace and whatever, wealth, wealth beyond imagination and wisdom like Solomon. I don't know. Um, those would not be my wishes, by the way. <laughs> um, but the entitlement is thinking that God will just hear it and like make everything better. Um, just as we tend to want to fix the people we love. Um, God doesn't fix the moment. What God does is takes our sin away. Very different. He gives us a new heart. He gives us a new life in him. The old has gone away and the new has come. Distinct from fixing. It's not some kind of refurbishing that's happening. It's a newness of life. So we continue with our ordinary blessings. And I thought, um, since it's pretty soon we, well, I don't know how much pretty soon is, it's a relative term these days, but one day in the future, we will be out in the streets again and in places in public again, and there'll be strangers there. So here is a poem for strangers. It's a shame that we taught a whole generation to believe strangers are dangerous, primarily automatically to whisper about people who might have words for themselves to mistrust help potential helpers. We are only strange when we leave each other unknown, swallowing childlike curiosity about other human beings, resisting that delicious moment of connection revealed. We're gonna have to figure out a way not to even be afraid of our friends coming forward. And I trust that we'll find a way. We'll make some mistakes along the way, but um, we'll find a way forward. Mr. Rogers, look at, we got a giraffe here. We're not called to be ostriches, maybe that's the point. I don't know, we'll find out. Let's not stick our head in the sand. Let's look upon the horizon for the walking giraffe. I love to take my giraffe for walks. He's taller than anyone else I know. You're welcome to talk with my tall giraffe. He's kind from head to his toe. So step back up and speak up, speak to my pet giraffe. He'll talk to us down here below. That would be a way to be six feet away from one another. If our heads are six feet higher than everybody else's heads, we wouldn't have to worry about it. So consider that, build yourself some stilts or do like an inspector gadget extension of your neck. That might not be sustainable or livable. Stilts might be more of an option. Just a thought. We can be creative, right? And then in our creativity, we can laugh and say, that is ridiculous. Maybe I'll just try to say hi. You, O oh Lord, are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us, O Lord, our God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. I just realized that I pulled up the Compline instead of the morning prayer. Oh, well, 
<laughs> I will then. Let's do this because I do want to pray. That is too funny. When you have two two of them, I guess sometimes yeah, get it wrong. I am fallible too, many many times. So if anybody was confused, it's not evening yet. It's still morning. But you got half a compliment anyway. So let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially, we thank you for the goodness of sustain, the sustaining of goodness of your creation. For the harvest that is beginning, for the new life and new hearts you give us this day, for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, help us to bring our laments to you, Lord, rather than those around us that are more fragile. And then let us help us share where we're at in our authentic emotions with the people in our life so that we can be held in their love and in their trust and in their support. And we can in turn hold them in theirs for they are the gift of relationships that you give us. For the communion of faith in your church, Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurt of all our, your children, and bring about your peace for all in Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Especially, we pray, for those who govern nations of the world, for President Trump and Governor Inslee, and all the governors of our country, and our local leaders, and also store owners and business owners, and those trying to figure out the next steps of keeping people, keeping people safe and having guidelines and help us to listen to the guidelines, Lord, to not make this harder for those who are already making hard decisions. And when we disagree, Lord, help us forward. Help us to hear the perspective of one another and lament to God rather than lashing out at the person we disagree with. For the con people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare or the virus, bring health and peace and equity. For all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the essential workers that are exhausted at this point, for those who are gonna start going back to work and might be afraid for the coming spike once again in the coronavirus. May we get through this as we have come so far with your help and guidance. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, Almighty God and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and always throughout this day. Amen.